please stand by. Thank you. Neep. But uh, she does a crazy, uh, she does a crazy. <laughs> I, I just did a crazy. <laughs> Greetings one and all and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade coming at you with my monthly playlist video. Yes, this is a video where I just talk about the stuff that I've listened to over the past month just for fun, just for listening's sake. And yes, as I warned you in my uh, Crawl and Haul video, I think it was, uh, this is going to be one of those playlists videos that is just CDs only, a CD special. Uh, I normally like to talk about five records, five CDs, and five cassettes that I listened to over the past month. But yes, as I mentioned, it's going to take me a while to get through all of the CDs that I bought over the course of my vacation. And if you want to see how much fun I had in my vacation and you haven't seen those two videos yet, I did two videos I recently uploaded of my vacation. Uh, lots of stuff, lots of fun I had, so I tried to vlog as much as I could and uh, show it all for you. But anyway, uh, yes, and as I said, I'm going to try not to do any two consecutive playlist videos as CD only, so next month when I do my playlist video, you can count on an assortment of CDs, records, and cassettes. Uh, so yes, but before we get to my playlist proper, uh, I'm going to go over what I call the liner notes, just miscellaneous thoughts and whatever. Uh, first of all, August 28th, which was yesterday as I'm recording this, that was the second anniversary of the closure of my beloved local record store, Skips Records and CD World. I cannot believe it's been two years since that store closed. I have missed it a lot, but uh, considering all the other weird and unpleasant stuff that, have ha that has happened over the last two years, I don't think I missed it as much as I could have otherwise. I guess in a weird way, I can thank life for being so crazy and nutso uh, that it, it helped me to not miss Skips as much. So yes, a great store. I've talked about Skips a lot on my channel. You can go look for uh, videos. I did an interview with Skip, the owner himself. It was a three-part video, lots of fun. And I also vlogged my last few stops at Skips. So yeah, go if you love watching people shop for records, go watch those videos. Uh, the next one is, is something that I forgot to mention in my most recent live stream when I was talking about the, the places that I ate at in on my vacation in Oklahoma. I forgot to mention one. And I remembered it when I thought of Oklahoma or excuse, of uh, Tulsa. And I realized that's the way I should have plotted out the stuff and written it down of where I ate was the cities that I ate at. I just tried to remember the places. But anyway, uh, this place in Tulsa was called The Vault. And it was built in what used to be a bank. That's why it was called The Vault. And it was just a fun, wonderfully designed place. The bank that was originally in that spot was built, I believe, in the 60s or possibly the 50s. So it was very mid-century modern. It had a lot of great decor from the 60s, kind of like Mad Men-ish. If you were looking for a Mad Men themed restaurant, that's the place to go to. And that great food and stuff. And one of the most pleasant memories I had of that place was actually something completely unrelated to the food. A couple of tables away from us, there was a party. I think it was a birthday party of like eight or nine people. When they, once they all got there, a couple of them were late. But it was a wonderfully multiracial group a multiracial gathering a pro there were probably a couple of latinos there are a few white uh, white people a couple of Afri african americans i think there was at least one asian so it was just that was just a great first impression of tulsa to, to know that there is such a multicultural environment there you know I, I had all these preconceptions before going to oklahoma that you know it was very white and very very bigoted so, uh, you know, I, I was, I'm glad to have been proven wrong about that. And I, I've really come to appreciate the city of Tulsa, uh, especially because of this visit. And that's just one of the reasons why. So there you go. Now onto the list of what, guy, gosh, I got like nine or 10 here of uh, people uh, from the world of music who passed away over the last month. And uh, actually slightly more than a month because I did my playlist video about a week sh uh, early because I was leaving on vacation. I wanted to get it out on time. But yes, starting out with uh, one of the biggest names, Dusty Hill from ZZ Top. Yes, the first third of ZZ Top to uh, pass away. So yes, kind, kind of the the beginning of the end of an era, I guess you'd say. So yes, an unfortunate passing for... Uh, I'm not a particular ZZ Top fan. I've got a couple of their 80s albums, but that's about it. But still, sad to hear. And then a couple of country and folk artists who passed away recently, Nancy Griffith and Tom T. Hall. Nancy Griffith was a bit, a bit more into the folk 
genre than uh, than Tom T. Hall was. Tom T. Hall was much more country. I am not familiar, sad to say, with either of their works. So, but uh, still, all the same. Rest in peace, Nancy Griffith and Tom T. Hall. And then we have Dennis Thomas, and this was one that I missed. Uh, Dennis Thomas was the saxophonist and one of the founding members of Cool in the Gang, a great group from the 70s, a great soul and R&B group. If you're not familiar with them, check them out. They're just excellent. So yes, very sad to hear of his passing as well. And then the uh, last living Everly brother, Don Everly, passed away uh, a couple weeks ago. That's very sad. That's another end of an era. The Everly brothers, as I've probably mentioned to you guys before, is one of my favorite. Uh, 50s, 60s uh, pop groups of all time. Their harmonies are just sublime, gorgeous harmonies. So yes, very sad to see him pass away. And then we have Brian Travers, who was a founding member of UB40, a reggae group. Uh, I do have a UB40 Greatest Hits album, so yes, I'm a very, very casual fan of them. And then two uh, very prominent drummers who just recently passed away. One of them you all, you guys all have heard about, Charlie Watts of the Rolling Stones, was with the group since the 60s, so he was one of the one of the heart and soul, and I mean, you know, lots of music, musicians claim that the drum is the heartbeat of the band, so truly, in a way, uh, the heartbeat of the Rolling Stones is gone. Not to say they won't find another excellent drummer to, to carry on with them, but uh, still, the end of an era as well as Ron Bushy, or is it Bushy? I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Uh, sorry about that. But he was the drummer for Iron Butterfly, and actually the only member of the band to appear on all of their studio albums. So yes, uh, that is another uh, end of an era for uh, Iron Butterfly. I know I don't think they're recording anymore, but uh, still very sad to hear of his passing as well. And then the last one that I heard about, I actually heard about Ron Bushy just this morning, as well as also this morning hearing of the demise of Lee Scratch Perry. He was a Jamaican producer and singer. Uh, some of the few people, some of the people he worked with were Bob Marley, The Clash, and The Beastie Boys. He either appeared on and or produced some of their songs over the years. So a, a, a man of many talents and uh, did not leave himself, keep himself confined, confined to the reggae genre. So yes. So yes, uh, Godspeed and rest in peace to all of these people that I just mentioned, and uh, probably the, the many more that uh, I didn't mention and that I don't know about. So uh, yes, a rather tragic last uh, five weeks or so in the world of music. So anyway, uh, on to much lighter business at hand, on to my playlist proper. Uh, since, as I said, I normally do five records, five CDs, and five cassettes every month, I'm going to do 15 CDs, or well, actually 15 titles because a few of these are multi-disc titles so those of you who like to uh, who are really strict about your numbers it's not just 15 cds but anyway be that as it may let's get on with my playlist uh my first one is boys to men this is their self-titled debut album uh this one came about i actually had one of the uh, low-priced compilation cds of boys to men but i was watching uh the first episode of the netflix music documentary this is pop which is really, really interesting and fun if you haven't watched it yet. Watch it. Uh, in the first episode, they talked about uh, how Boys to Men was basically responsible for incorporating contemporary R&B music into mainstream pop, which I guess I kind of knew in the back of my mind at the time, but it didn't really gel until I watched this this episode. And so, yes, it, it prominently featured the, the uh, members of Boys to Men. And it was a very interesting episode, as were all of the episodes of This Is Pop. But yes, a great album, and you know, they are basically modern-day legends for a reason. Uh, we, of course, have It's So Hard to Say Goodbye to Yesterday, one of the best ballads to ever come out of the 90s. 90s? Yeah, 1991. As well as Motown Philly, their, I think that was their debut single. But yes, a great band for a reason, as I said. Uh, their second album is just as good. I bought that one uh, shortly after I bought this one and listened to it. And they're both just up there. Just great, great uh, albums by a great band. And then we have uh, an artist named Amy McDonald. I believe she is British or possibly Irish. And this one I found at the local store, but this, this is an import, I believe. Uh, it's in one of those uh, Super Jewel boxes which were popular back in the early 2000s. The UK and Europe used them a lot more than the US did. But uh, anyway, very good stuff. Uh, she reminds me, kind of reminds me of KT Tunstall, but maybe a little bit more pop rather than rock. KT Tunstall has a little bit more rock in her sound. But he's a very good artist. Uh, Mr. Rock and Roll is the uh, opening track. And of course, Me and My Penchant for Songs About Music, right there. And there's another song called Let's Start a Band, 
another really good one. And uh, Poison Prince is another good song off this album. So she's put out four or five albums, I believe, over the years. But uh, this is the only one I've tried so far. So I figured, what the heck? And it was pretty good. And then we have Harbinger, which I believe was the debut album by Paula Cole. She was much more famous for her uh, the, her subsequent album, This Fire. But this one is just about as good, uh, I've got to say. She tackles uh, socio-political issues on the song Hitler's Brothers, a controversial title, but it talks about um, neo-Nazism, and I guess it was on the rise back in the uh, early to mid-90s. Uh, I guess it never really went away, let's face it. But anyway, uh, yes, uh, she did a song that was kind of socio-political on her album This Fire as well. It was about uh, a friend of hers who had contracted HIV and was dying of AIDS. A very good song there, and a very topical and, and controversial song. Unfortunately topical again, you know, 20 years, almost 20 years after she recorded it. Uh, but yes, otherwise a very, very good album as well. So yeah, all the other songs are just excellent. So I would recommend checking it out if you like her album This Fire or her singles. I'd recommend checking out Harbinger as well. And then we have The Hollies. This is a 20-track compilation of their greatest hits. A great band to come out of the 70s. Um, I don't know that they were hugely successful on the charts, but uh, hey, you know, it's, it's a band that, it's a can't-miss band. If you like 60s and 70s stuff, uh, Graham Nash from Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young was a part of this group. He was one of the front men. And uh, Carrie Ann was one of their biggest hits. And the good songs don't stop there. I mean, it's like, as I said, 20 tracks on here. Great, excellent compilation of 70s stuff. And then we have, uh, as I mentioned in my, I believe I mentioned in my Crawl and Hall video, I was checking out uh, Chris Isaac. I've been on a, a semi-Chris Isaac binge of late, and but this album I actually didn't buy on my vacation. I bought it at Epic Seconds, I believe, uh, a few weeks ago. And it's his album, Mr. Lucky. And this one is pretty good, uh, in part because of the songs in general, but one song he has a duet with Trisha Yearwood, and on another song he duets with Michelle Branch. So he brings in the names for this one, and uh, yeah, I'm really starting to like uh, Chris Isaac. He was uh, an artist that I just ignored way back when he was in his heyday, um, and and kind of I'm 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 learning my lesson now that uh, I shouldn't have ignored him. And then we come to a uh, much more well-known band in the list that I'm doing here, uh, Aerosmith their album Get a Grip. This was one of their 90s albums uh, during their brief-ish stint on Geffen Records in between uh, their two stints on Columbia. And I mainly got this one for the song Living on the Edge, one of their singles, better singles to come out of that period, better known singles. And it's kind of a weird reason why I like that song so much. It's because Weird Al Yankovic did a parody of it called Living in the Fridge. You know, stuff that you keep, uh, leftovers you keep too long in, uh, in the refrigerator and they turn into you're not sure what. So, very funny song if you haven't heard it. Uh, one of his better parodies, in my opinion. But I also realized that uh, there's also the song Line Up, which was used in, I believe it was the first Ace Ventura movie. And I, I kind of like that song because of the movie. And, I, you know, when it came up on the playlist, I thought, oh, there's that song. So anyway, and I believe the song Crazy was also a relatively uh, popular hit single for them back in the day. So, yeah, a good album and a very worthy addition to my personal Aerosmith collection. Then we have, uh, there are a couple albums in here that I did buy on my vacation. Uh, I'm getting to the first one now. We have Zach Hexum with his album The Story So Far. This one, as you might recall, was one that I had owned a long time ago, got rid of uh, for space reasons, and I'm very, very glad that I picked it up again. Some great singer-songwriter pop rock, great stuff in here. Uh, I could cite all the songs on here. Uh, Spicy Streak is one good one, and Outside Opinion, and what is my favorite? Oh, um, One Spin. It's it's basically about you only get one chance in life. It's kind of a thing. But yes, every single song on here is just great. Uh, Met a Girl Like You Once is the opening track. That's really good. So if you happen upon this one, I have no idea if, if it's on streaming or not. I should have checked uh, Spotify before I fired up the, up the camera here to check. But uh, yeah. Very uh, worthy, worth listening to if you have not listened to it yet. And then this one, which is one of my successful discography completions that I accomplished on this vacation, All American Rejects, with their album When the World Comes Down. Uh, great stuff, as good as all of their other albums. I I've really come to enjoy these guys. I tried them out way back when they first put out their first album before they became uh, reasonably well known and liked it. I dropped off listening to them for quite a while, several years. And then I eventually came back to them and uh, 
had wanted this album and their most recent one for a while and just never gotten around to getting them until this last trip. So very happy to add these to my collections. Gives You Hell was the big single off of here. But yeah, I mean, front to back, this has got some really good songs on it. So great uh, alternative rock stuff. Yeah. And then we have a couple of mm, easy listening titles, I guess you'd say. Uh, the self-titled album by Karen Carpenter. This one was, it was recorded back in the 70s, I think, or, or the, the early 80s, but it wasn't put out on an album. It wasn't actually released until the early 90s. 1996 is when this one was put out. It was produced by Phil Ramone. I think, I think it was the label didn't think it was worth releasing, but I mean, just try and figure out the logic of record labels, really, especially major labels. But anyway, that's that's another discussion for another time. Very good stuff on here. It's just as good as the Carpenters uh, stuff that she did with her brother Richard. And uh, one noteworthy thing on this one is, uh, if well, for one thing, it's it's twelve tracks, so it's a pretty pretty long album. Or, but but that's no strike against it. Very good. I could listen to Karen Carpenter's voice all day. No, she does a cover of Paul Simon "Still Crazy After All These Years," and yes, a good rendition of it. And I mean. Honestly, let's face it, Karen Carpenter could sing the phone book, and, and it would be worth listening to. I mean, you just got such a great voice. There's a little piece of fuzz floating in front of the eyes, swatted it away. And there it is again. Anyway, and on to uh, another one here that I also got at, uh, yeah, Karen Carpenter was one of my thrift store buys, and so was this one. I Left My Heart in San Francisco by Tony Bennett, a classic, classic album, and for very good reason. Uh, yes, some of these songs, the renditions of these, the songs themselves I had heard before, but ne not heard Tony Bennett's renditions of them. Uh, he did Smile, the song written by Charlie Chaplin. Yes, the film star Charlie Chaplin wrote the song Smile, in case you didn't know. And some songs from uh, movies of the time. Uh, I'm Always Chasing Rainbows, that was a really good one. Uh, Love for Sale, which actually is going to be the title track of his upcoming album, second album with Lady Gaga. So I'm looking forward to that one. So yes, uh, Taking a Chance on Love, and of course the title track, his signature song. But yeah, great stuff. And that was the first actual album of Tony Bennett's classic album that I had ever listened to. I had only listened to uh, compilations of his and the more recent uh, duets albums that he's done with uh, contemporary artists. So lots of fun with that one. And then uh, these next, oh gosh, five titles are actually multi-disc titles. Uh, I was talking at the beginning of the video about uh, it's not just 15 CDs, it's actually 15 titles. Uh, for those of you, you number geeks out there. But anyway, the first one here is one that I actually scored off of the freebie shelf at House of Records uh, before I went on vacation. So I've had this one for a month. I just hadn't listened to it until after I got back from vacation. Ultimate Soul Classics Volume 1. This is a three-disc set. Uh, the case was in much worse condition when I picked it up. I actually put it in a new case. That's why it looks so much better. But uh, yes, a, th a three-disc set from uh, when uh, Columbia House were doing their uh, music club they would put that put out their their own uh, compilations that they they did themselves and sold on that through their club and yeah this one is, is uh, three discs packed with a bunch of stuff uh 12 songs on each disc disc one covers the 60s disc two covers the 70s and disc three covers the 80s and what's cool about uh especially about the 80s disc was there's a lot of stuff on here that i remember hearing on the radio way back in the day but had completely forgotten about and, you know, a lot of these compilations can be accused of, rightfully so, of just slapping on the same old stuff that you've heard on all the other compilations. Uh, but these guys kind of went, went the extra mile back in the day and put some less, uh, less frequently heard stuff on here. So, uh, Stop to Love by Luther Vandross. I hadn't heard that one. I remember hearing that one when, when it came on the CD. I remembered it. Uh, Caravan of Love by Isley Jasper Isley, uh, as well as Backstabbers by the OJs. And... An interesting thing that ties both of those two songs to get together, I had originally become acquainted with both of those songs through instrumental versions that the Rippingtons did. So, yes, that's one thing that the Rippingtons were really good at, is doing soul and R&B covers uh, in, in their repertoire on their albums and stuff. So, interesting trivia note of my music listening habits. And then we have uh, Lost in Emotion by Lisa Lisa and Cult Jam. That's another one that I uh, brought back some memories. So, yeah. Lots of good stuff on this one, and an interesting compilation. I was expecting it to just kind of be a throwaway, but uh, I'm going to keep it. It was so good. So, And then we have another uh, Various Artists compilation. This is one that you saw in my Crawl and Hall video, Burt Backrack and Friends Gold. Great stuff on here. Uh, 41 songs packed on here. 
just an amazing array of artists. The Carpenters, Dionne Warwick, Dusty Springfield, Tom Jones, B.J. Thomas, The Fifth Dimension, uh, Isaac Hayes, he does uh, Walk On By, which is an interesting uh, interesting rendition of the song. And then we have uh, one of the things that I didn't even realize I uh, when I picked it up, I only read so far in the track listing and didn't realize this is kind of, uh, in a second way, it's a souvenir of my trip because on here is Gene Pitney's song, 24 Hours from Tulsa. And I bought the CD when I was in Oklahoma. So there you go. Just another, another reason to keep it besides the fact that the songs are just so darn good on it. So yeah, very worthwhile picking that up, especially for two and a half bucks. And then uh, this one I found in the $2 section at House of Records a couple months ago. A two-disc gold compilation, kind of like the uh, Burt Backer and, Backer and Friends, the Neville Brothers. And they do some uh, some of the Neville Brothers uh, group stuff, as well as some of Art Neville's solo stuff, and some of the stuff from their previous groups, the Hawks, excuse me, the Hawkettes, and the Meters. Lots of good, great uh, soul and R&B stuff on here. Uh, just wonderful. I picked up a solo Greatest Hits album by Art Neville oh, about a year ago, and I didn't realize until I listened to it what a great artist he was by himself. And yeah, this, uh, his work with his brothers just kind of proves that right out, and uh, he's just a great, great artist, a great family of artists. And then this next one here, uh, I actually bought from a friend off of Discogs. And it is a two-disc share compilation called The Way of Love. This covers her stuff from 1965 to 1979. A bunch of great stuff. I mean, it, got, it has her big hits like Gypsies, Tramps, and Thieves, and Bang Bang, My Baby Shot Me Down, as well as Half Breed. But it's got a lot of other lesser-known stuff, at least lesser-known to me, songs. So yeah, so very, very fun to listen to, and it was well worth the purchase. And then the last title on here. <laughs> this one's probably going to surprise a lot of you. And it is, unlike a lot of the stuff that was on this list, it is a very, very modern thing. Uh, I saw it at House of Records just last week, and it was for a pretty decent price, and I decided I couldn't pass it up. I mean, for, for one thing, I'm buying it from House of Records, so, so they're getting to the profit from it when it might not be something that a lot of people would buy. So anyway, long story short, BTS, the best of BTS, is a two-disc compilation of theirs that was just released earlier this year. And uh, it's got the, the newest song I think it has on it is Dynamite. And I, I, I honestly, I kind of like that song from what I'd heard of it. I had actually never consciously, deliberately listened to BTS before buying this album. Full confession. Uh, but, you know, they kind of surprised me. A lot more hip hop and R&B elements in it than I thought there were gonna be. I went through a very brief J-pop, Japanese pop phase a while ago, and it was very pop, very much synth-driven, high energy beats, that kind of stuff. So I was kind of expecting this to be one-dimensional, kind of like that. That's why I avoided BTS for so long. But uh, yeah, as I said, they kind of surprised me with this. Uh, lots of good stuff. I'm very glad I bought this. And this, uh, since this is a Japanese release, uh, a lot of the songs are the Japanese versions. I assume the ones that we've all heard uh, are the Korean versions. Uh, but, you know, again, this is just a guess. Uh, the only song, as I said, that I'd heard going into this was most but not all of Dynamite. So, yes, I was very glad I decided to take the plunge, uh, uh, pull the trigger, and uh, get this and pick it up. And that was, was very, very entertaining, i got to say. And so that'll do it for my playlist for the month of August 2021. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.